Welcome to Radio Friends on Tuesday, January the 15th. We're going to talk about the Columbia Art League today. Glad you're, glad you're with us. Diana Moxon, glad Hello, you're with us. Paul. Doesn't time fly when oh, you're having does. fun? It does. I can't believe it's the new year already. January 15th, 2013. <laughs> 2013. Did you have a good Christmas and a new I year? I had a lovely time, thank you. I had to work New Year's Eve because the Art League was, you know, open for first night. But yeah. It's always good. Always and that fun. turned out well, didn't it? It was great. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. So what, what, have, what have you got going for 2013? Well, today, right today, we have a new show opening. So our first just show... Just today? Just today. J January 15th, yeah, today. First time to come and see it. Our new show, first one of the year, is called Beauty and the Beholder. Not Beauty and the Beast, Beauty and the Beholder. Beauty and the Beholder. The Beholder is the visitor to the gallery, is the viewer of the show. Oh, how nice. And we invited And artists. the beauty is everything that is at the gallery. It is. It's an artist's interpretation of beauty, what it means to them, or it might be a statement on the beauty industry, or it might be a, and a statement on um, what, you know, what is beautiful to one person is not beautiful to another. So they could explore lots That's of different... That's kind of like one man treasure is another man's trash. Exactly. Exactly. That, that kind of, there are whole exploration. I like to keep the topics broad and that are accessible to all different mediums. So, you know, you can respond to it, whether you're a painter or a photographer or a ceramic artist or a wood carver. So, oh, so you're going to have all of those mediums? Here? Yeah, it's always a mixed show. We always have lots of different mediums there. How do you do this? I don't do any of it. The artists in our community yes, do yes, it. Yes, I mean, but you organize it. You organize it all, and you have so many wonderful artists. That... We do. I mean, it's just an amazing community to, um, you know, you put a show idea out there, and we have so many fabulous people that are adept in so many different mediums, and so always we have more work than we know we have space for that comes in. Oh, really? To the gallery. So this oh, is. Oh, you're this not is able a... to accept everything. No, this is a juried show. Uh, which means that not every piece that comes in uh, is in the show. We bring an outside you know, juror in to choose the works that he or she feels are the strongest fitting with the theme of the show. Um, so in, in the year, we do six shows a year. And wait a minute. Now, just because one piece wasn't picked doesn't mean that it is not a good piece. Absolutely. It just meant, when you say it's a juror in the show, it just meant that that person who was choosing it Right. Uh, decided not to choose it, but somebody else could come in and say, this, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very uh, subjective... So what do you do with the pieces that don't end up in the, the show? Then the artists come and pick the works up. And, and you know, and, and submits another piece for the next show, and that's that's they they. Can they know. resubmit the same piece if they want? Well, it's a di the next show is a different theme, so it wouldn't fit. So the second show of the year, for example, this year is called Edible, and it's a show about food. We did a show last year called Eat Me, and it was a really big show. It was very popular. We sold a lot of work. People really liked it. The artists enjoyed the theme. So we're going to revisit the food theme for the second show of well, the year. I could, food is beautiful, so maybe some. So there may be some pieces <laughs> yeah. that are crossover works. Yeah, you know, you right. never know. Um, but that, that is there. So of the six shows we do a year, four are open to members and non-members of the Art League. Is this they one that's juried. open to non-members too? It is. It's juried. And they just pay a higher jury fee. And then two shows a year, the summer show and the holiday season show, are uh, non-juried, only open to members. Um, and are no, there's no specific theme. So people can enter whatever they want. Mm -hmm. So through the course of the year, so we have the you know four shows that are juried and two that are not. Now, the, 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 the show that opens today, mm -hmm. Beauty and the Beholder. Beholder. Beauty and the Beholder. All of these pieces that will be on display will also be for sale. Yes, they will. Too. Yep. So if you, and how long is the show going to be running? Until the end of February, the 23rd of February, and that weekend just before True False starts, we change the show that weekend. Yeah. Now, let's say somebody comes in today and they see a piece that they just have, fall in love with. They, it's they so gotta beautiful, have it. they can't they resist gotta it. They got to have it. They got, and they got to have it now. Can they purchase it 
today and go home with it now? What happens to that spot that was in the show? Uh, we move things around if, if, that, well, if something sells. Maybe you could sells. get somebody that didn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a jury show, so you've got to stick to the rules. Um, but usually what we say to people, if it's bought early on, is would they mind leaving it through the duration of the show. And, you know, nine and a half times out of 10, people say, oh yeah, that's fine, you know, because they live locally. If they live elsewhere in the country and they're visiting and they really want to take it, then of course they can take it, it's up to the buyer. But most people are happy for it to sit in the gallery for, you know, four or five weeks. Sure, okay. Um, so it starts today and it runs through February the... Uh... 22nd, 23rd, something like that. And yeah. then we start the, uh, the next show, it's called Edible, it's the food show. And if you remember, last year we did a, a little fundraiser for the Art League called Let Them Eat Art, where we teamed up local chefs with works in the show. So we invited local chefs to come in, 10 chefs, and choose a work in the show as an inspiration for a dish of tapas, you know, like little bite-sized food. Mm -hmm. And that was phenomenal. That was such a great evening. We only sold 100 tickets. We sold out really fast. The chefs all enjoyed it. They did incredible food that matched a painting or an artwork in the, in the gallery. Mm -hmm. and so we're going to revisit that again. We're going to do another Let Them Eat Art event on, I think it's April the 4th. So that's coming up as well as part well, you'll of be back before show. then. You'll be back I'll be before back before then. 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 Yeah, yeah. But you know what? We've got just a little bit of time here. I, I want you to give us a general overview of everything that you do down there, besides the shows with the Art League. Besides the shows. Well, of course, we have Art in the Park. That's yeah. the big thing, the first weekend in June. And that really takes up a good six or eight months of the year. Um, so we already are working on Art in the Park. Right We've, now, in January, you're oh, working on Art I, I in the Park. I started on working on Art in October last year. So we put the app, you know, we send the... Uh, um, Postcard to press, the postcard gets mailed out, applications from the artists start arriving in November. So Art in the Park really is the biggest event that you have. Oh yeah, by far, it's huge. So It's so huge. It, it, it really does take up a chunk of the year, a lot of, a lot of time yeah. and But then you have, you have classes. We do, we have classes for children and adults. And in fact, tomorrow on the 16th, um, we start the homeschool program again. So every semester we do a homeschool program and we do three mm -hmm. Ages, three classes for homeschool, K through two, three to five, and six plus, six grade grade six and over and that's on Wednesday afternoon and this semester is very fun we've got April Karlovic who's an amazing artist in the community and a puppeteer and so the homeschool uh, semester will be looking at puppetry scene making puppet creation sketching out you know storylines and and how you would develop oh, that sounds like so much fun I know I want to take that class yeah <laughs> you know when I was a kid when I was a kid I would have begged my parents to let me go to this <laughs> right. class so so you, you young people old people anybody Everybody's welcome. Well, that's homeschool. That's, that's just for the homeschool. homeschool. So only so for the young yeah, people. Yeah, you've okay. got to be under like grade eight or something. But yeah, it's yeah, for the... <laughs> well, we need a call from somebody my age and say, I want to be a part of that class. <laughs> Maybe we'll do an adult <laughs> Give version it a try. Too. Give yeah. it a try. Okay. So Columbia. There's, there's the classes. Yeah, so lots of things go on. All right. Yeah. What's the phone number for more information? 573-443-8838. Give just me a ring. Ring her up. All right, <laughs> Diana Moxon, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you, Paul. Always a pleasure <laughs> having you here. Uh, tomorrow... The Heart of Missouri United Way is our topic. Our program directed by Travis McMillan, Reynolds Journalism Institute. Audio is Pat Akers from KBIA. Our floor director is Eric Stazak, and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.